Mizuma TV back in the building, man. What's going on, y'all? Shout out to Mizuma Nation. Shout out to the Mizuma Ma. We in the building as always, man. Back at y'all with another video. Shout out to the nation. Shout out to the mob. I'm back with some more boxing talk. All right, y'all. Let's talk about something that I had just seen on uh, Instagram, man. Shout out to ESPN Ringside, I guess. You know what I mean? For providing the information. But apparently, Nayua Inoue has been named ESPN's 2023 Fighter of the Year, man. Congratulations on Iowa anyway. At the end of the day, I can't really do anything about it, whether I agree or disagree with this decision. But uh, he, he's had a pretty good year, man. Pretty much became undisputed in one year, conquered the 122-pound weight division in two fights. You know what I mean? Steven Fulton and Marlon Tapales. Um was able to conquer that division in just two fights, man. So shout out to Nayu anyway for winning fighter of the year. I strongly disagree with that. Um, <clears throat> I honestly feel as though Terrence Crawford is the fighter of the year just based off of that one performance that he had. And there's a lot of people that's been coming out and saying that it, uh, that Nayu anyway deserves that, which may be true. You know what I mean? I'm trying to speak on it as objectively as possible. But they're saying that Terrence Crawford doesn't deserve it, which makes me scratch my head because <clears throat> they're basing it off of him only fighting one time this year now i i don't understand why people are even taking that approach of saying that he's only fought once this year because in all honesty um this isn't about the most consistent fighter of the year this isn't an award for most active fighter of the year this is for the fighter of the year you know who had the best moment of 2023 you know what i mean who had who who made the biggest statement in 2023 that's what what that's what we should be looking at when discussing who is the fighter of the year now how many times they fought this year you know what i mean not about their activity and, and all of that good shit man it's about who had the biggest moment this year who put on the most dominating performance who was the man this year who had their moment and i honestly feel like terrence carver had the biggest moment this year you know what I'm saying? I honestly feel like that. He beat another top pound for pound fighter in the world at Earl Spence Jr. Uh, prior to his loss to Terrence Crawford, they was rating him in the top five pound for pound. Uh, Terrence Crawford was in the top three. Ter and, and, um, and, uh, depending on what list you're looking at, Earl Spence might have been in the top three as well. And there were people that were making arguments saying that Earl Spence should be above Terrence Crawford on the pound for pound list because he had a better resume at 147. You know what I'm saying? I disagree with that. I always had Terrence Crawford number one, but you get what I'm going. You, you, you get what I'm saying. You know what I mean? Um, they give it to Nayu anyway. And I also, also, this isn't what the video is going to be about, but I also seen that they named Katie Taylor the 2023, I guess, like, woman fighter of the year? Female fighter of the year? Which uh, blows my mind because she lost this year. You know what I mean? She lost this year um, and came back and avenged her loss. So that's enough to be considered female fighter of the year. If you avenge the loss, you fought two times this year. You fought two times this year, and one of them, you you had a loss. You were one and one. You know what I'm saying? Um, that that baffles me in all honesty because I think they will lean more towards somebody like Amanda Serrano, who in 2023 was three and zero, and um, did some legendary shit, man, and 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 participated in 12 three minute rounds. You know what I'm saying? Um, so that, that's that's pretty interesting. You know what I mean? That's pretty interesting. Um, I don't know exactly who determines who's the fighter of the year over at ESPN, but um, I really want to speak on whether uh, the people believe whether this is bias, uh, just bias reporting or whatever, just being biased with who they choose to be their fighter of the year, or 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 are they being fair? You know what I mean? Does Nayu in any way really deserve to be fighter of the year over Terrence Crawford? Let's really think about this. You know what I'm saying? Um, the only real thing that I could say that makes it a legitimate case is that he was able to do that within this year. You know what I'm saying? I think he, he did it within a year and some change. You know what I mean? Impressive. You know what I mean? But the Stephen Fulton, who is a Philadelphia, uh, a Philadelphia just like myself, and is Marlon Tapales. Either one of them dudes, have they accomplished what Earl Spence has accomplished? Were they as big of a fighter uh, as Earl Spence was? Were they as accomplished as Earl Spence was? These are things that we genuinely have to ask. Were they pound for pound rated fighters at the time like Earl Spence? Not at all. You know what I mean? There's a lot of people who did not even know who Marlon Tapales was prior to any way facing this man. Um, Stephen Fulton is, a, is an accomplished dude, real underrated resume. Can't lie to you. But did he, did he have the resume to really show that he was one of the best fighters in the world? 
Now, I, I believe he was extremely underrated. I think that he was better than a lot than a lot of guys. You know what I mean? And honestly, before anyway, I thought he was the best 22, 122 pounder in the world. Can't lie to you. You know what I mean? But does he? Does his resume? Does his accolades? Does his accomplishments overall add up to an Earl Spence Jr.? I do not believe so. You know what I'm saying? So, um, you guys are going off of quantity. You guys are going off of quantity. You know what I mean? Because y'all discrediting. Y'all discredited Terrence Crawford by only saying that he fought one time this year. But quite, if we if we really want to be honest, this could be a, a, a situation where you could be looking at quality over quantity because although anyway for two guys, that one guy and Earl Spence was a bigger name than both of them dudes. Put together. Put together. Let, let's be honest here. You know what I'm saying? So, um, you know... Uh, Terrence Carver used to be with Top Rank and, and Top Rank has a network deal with ESPN. Could it be that since he's no longer with them that you know they chose, they decided not to choose him? Could it be that? Who knows? You know what I'm saying? Maybe maybe they give it a nine one anyway because he's associated with Top Rank and Top Rank has a network with ES, has a network deal with ESPN. That could be very possible. You know what I'm saying? We're going to discuss this more tonight, but what disgusts me more than anything is the whole Katie Taylor situation, which we, we definitely going to touch up on. You know what I mean? I know exactly why they uh, decided to choose that woman as the female fighter of the year, but I, I can make a stronger case for Amanda Serrano being female fighter of the year. Or if y'all have someone else to consider female fighter of the year, you might have a strong case for them as well. But uh, we definitely going to chop it up tonight, man. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Now you want anyway is named the 2023 male fighter of the year. What do y'all think about that? Do you think it's fair? Do you think it's biased? You let me know in the comments below. This is Mizuma TV. Thank you very much for tuning in. I'm out of here, man. Peace.